and welcome to the first in a series of Data Moran podcasts featuring market stories on digitalization and the future of business. We see now more than ever that organizations are attempting to navigate an increasingly disruptive risk landscape. In a series of in-depth inter interviews with business leaders, policymakers, and academics, we will explore how the future of work is more digital, more innovative, and more connected than ever. Today, we're sitting down with Data Moran CEO, Mariella Lacorte Alma. How are you doing? I'm very well. How are you, Susie? Doing okay. Hanging in there. Yeah. So thinking about the, the broader themes of digitalization and the future of business, how is Data Moran currently navigating the disruptions caused by the coronavirus pandemic? That's a very good question. Um, it feels to me that we're working currently at three different levels. So level one is to see, you know, what kind of operational measures can we take as a company to continue the work um, as much as possible in a, you know, in a very different setting and coming to terms with what that different setting actually means and how long this will last. Uh, I think the timeline is probably the most um, uncertain um, issue with, within this new context that we're all of a sudden faced with. So within that first level, it's about figuring out how to best work remotely, uh, stay in touch with, with our colleagues, um, stay connected, you know, amongst uh, employees that are in 12 different countries uh, globally um, and three main offices. Uh, and also stay in touch with our clients and partners and really understand what's going on. I think that's the hardest part um, at the moment. Um, we've always been a, a digital company and always been proud that we you know, ha had a digital solution. But I think this is taking remote working to a whole different level. And um, we very quickly have to come to terms to it, with that on, on how, to, how to optimize it. And, and also in terms of you know, employee well-being, how are people really doing? It's sometimes very hard to get that real sense from, um, from a Google Hangout conversation or Zoom. You know, we have all these channels, we have all these means, but... Um, nothing beats face to face. I think that's, that's a hard reality too. Then on a second level, mm -hmm. we're very much trying to keep things as normal as possible. So the plan that we had set out for 2020 still applies. Uh, the team still uh, you know, have their uh, mandates that we agreed um, in January, you know, in January is always the time where we say, okay, let's do this in terms of product development. Let's try to reach these goals in terms of business development and thought leadership and content creation. So we're continuing that as much as possible while also at the same level, and that's the third level, trying to really think hard about what might be the world's um, post uh, post crisis and if there are any things we should do in this period to be best prepared and ready for that um, considering it will be you know unlikely that we will go back to the normal that was there um, just a couple of weeks ago what we found normal and normal for us very much was traveling places to see people to see our clients to go to conferences um and um what we're sensing now is that uh, you know now more than ever uh people might um embrace uh more of a digital working environment might not go back to normal in terms of you know the um face-to-face -face activity that we, we we've had in, in in the past the recent past but even more so, I guess, in terms of like the, um, um, the business reality in terms of understanding that there are risks out there 
that might seem immaterial today, but very quickly can become material to business uh, tomorrow. Which fits, I, I guess, you know, with, with, with what Datamaran always tried to, to do from the beginning is to uh, uh, shed a spotlight on, on external risks per pertaining to environmental, social governance, but also geopolitical and, and technology issues. Um, and that's maybe the silver lining for, you know, us as a business, of course, we, we want to continue to do well in this space but also for the world that there's a new enlightenment uh, around uh, the need for um, looking, be looking beyond the day-to-day, the, -day, the business as usual, and trying to have more of a, uh, a balance between um, uh, work uh, and life and nature and profit. Um, so there's an opportunity, I think, for, uh, for us to rethink how we have been doing business uh, in relation to the world around us. And it seems that there's a, a clear message coming from planet Earth telling us that we're actually not the ones that are, that are in control. Um, I've been thinking a lot about, you know, like last year, 2019, we saw... Greta Thunberg, you know, speaking at these UN summits um, with a lot of passion, trying to convince the people in the room, you know, do more, work harder, mm -hmm. you're in charge. And um, it felt like, you know, that was the way to go about it. If you convince world leaders and business leaders to think differently and to take the climate change um you know the climate crisis as an example um if you if you get them to to think differently then that might have a, an impact i think what we're seeing right now is that none of us are in control you know this this crisis this this virus that's out there it doesn't discriminate we're all in our homes in front of a screen trying to figure out how to, you know, how, how to keep going and, 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 and anticipate what will happen next. But uh, a big, big lesson here is that um, we're, we're not so in control as we thought we were. And uh, I'm hopeful that this, you know, let, let's call it a mandatory reflection period will actually mm -hmm. um, turn into an opportunity where we are, will look at the world differently and uh, rethink how we have been, uh, you know, using up resources and um, in terms of, you know, how you go about um, the work itself and, 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 and your day to day life and the day-to-day -day life, but and, and and also in terms of the purpose of your company, right? Do you really have yeah, a, yeah. a license to operate? Should you should you be there? I think all those es uh, yeah essential questions are coming up now, and we're seeing them in a different way than very different than before. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what you were saying in terms of rethinking, you know, the way business is done, and and having sort of this forced opportunity to do that. Um, it really brings up a concept that we've talked a lot about in the past year. Um, already in 2019, we were saying, you know, 2020 was the year that all of these goals companies put forth around ESG issues. You know, it was really sort of the deadline or the time that they would come to fruition. Yeah. Um, but of course, 2020 is here, things have been disrupted. Uh, even before the disruption, not all of the goals were met. So it really brings up this concept of authenticity. And um, it's a concept that we talked about last week in our private financial services event with the Data Moran community. Uh, Evan Harvey, head of sustainability for NASDAQ, actually brought it up saying that um, a silver lining of this crisis will, will be shedding a light on you know, how authentic companies actually are about their ESG strategy and whether or not that really is integrated into the broader corporate strategy into the broader risk management process. Yeah. Uh, so 
you know, how do you think companies can really prove or reinforce that they are authentic about their ESG goals and strategy? You know, in, in a way, that's, that's the beauty of, of a crisis like this, you know. Um, it will show very clearly um, who's helping and who's not helping. So we've been mm -hmm. capturing, uh, you know, corporate initiatives on, on, on the data brand website since a few weeks now uh, in terms of the actions that, you know, the healthcare industry is taking and also in terms of, um, you know, banks that are being more lenient in terms of, you know, payments and loans. So that information's out there in the public and it's almost like, you know, we're going back to the traditional concept of corporate responsibility to see who's really stepping up to the plate right now and the world's watching. And that's the only thing that the media is reporting on, you know, beyond the, let's say the coronavirus numbers in terms of infections and deaths, then it's about, okay, mm -hmm. what's the private sector doing in collaboration with the, with, with government. Um, I saw an interesting article uh, yesterday, I think it was in the FT, which was ar around the need for a new social contract between governments mm. and the private sector. Um, I remember last week there was a, uh, it was Philips actually, Philips CEO who said, um, the reason why we haven't been able to ramp up the production of ventilators more quickly and other med medical equipment is because we did we got the request from government so late you know it could have been a couple of weeks earlier yeah. we would have had already we would have been in a better spot so i think it also makes you rethink you know if if the private sector is the sector with the capabilities to quickly innovate and come with solutions then those relationships between governments that are in charge and that can make these kinds of decisions as to you know, lockdown and quarantine and uh, then that re that type of collaboration, that kind of relationship needs to be rethought and needs to be uh, more agile in a way. Because I, 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 I was initially surprised when, you know, all the measures started to take effect. Felt very much like, um, you know, World War II situation where you are back to um, relying on, on government to take me measures, mm. which are typically way more slow, uh, the army coming back into play. And you think, okay, you know, normally in my day-to-day -day work, um, we're talking about innovation, we're talking about new technologies and, the, and, the, and how quickly things are changing and the possibilities new technologies are bringing. Where are they now? Why, why are they not why, why are we not talking about that? So yeah. um, I think that's another part that we will start to see is, a, you know, a, a new relationship, I hope, between government and, and the private sector where things can happen, happen more, uh, more quickly. And in terms of mm -hmm. authenticity, I think you can see it very clearly, you know, who is really stepping up uh, to the plate right now, but also who has forward-looking insight. Um, this company in, in, in uh, Ohio, ba uh, Battelle, uh, with this technology that is able to sterilize um, face masks um, many, many, many times. You know, I wonder why, why, mm -hmm. why was that already in play two years ago? Why did they believe it was a good thing to build that technology and um, how did they get the funding for it? Um, yeah. So yeah, innovation and 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 the slow-moving government uh, governmental action. Somehow that needs to yeah we we need to connect that and marry that. Mm -hmm.